Hello and welcome back to Just Jill, the podcast where we talk about all things faith, Christianity, the industry, meaning the music industry, culture, breaking stereotypes and living as we are truly called to live. I hope you've enjoyed the past two podcasts. I really enjoyed doing them. This one's taken a bit longer than I would have liked because I've had a lot of life changes and a lot of things going on. But today's subject I'm really, really excited about. It's called let's be honest about what it means to be modest now this was quite a hard subject for me to bring to the table and to discuss but it's something that i know that i've been wanting to do for a long time so i was very prayerful about it and i was very careful about the notes that i made i've had some really negative experiences in this area i've actually had some really aggressive and quite rude things said to me so it's, it's a sensitive one for me, but I do believe that by sharing this with you that hopefully someone will find something from it and be set free in the same way that I was. So just to give you a bit of the background before we start talking about this one, I had a bit of an experience which led me on my journey to studying and kind of really digging deep to know what God is saying to me personally about modesty. And I'm just telling this story really to give a bit of background for where we're going in this conversation and so that you know we've, we've set the scene for where we're going about four years into my walk as a christian i came to a christian sister i didn't actually know this girl very well to be fair she was a friend of a friend but we were in like a small group bible study and we we're in a cafe somewhere and i was talking to her and i opened up to her about the fact that i was struggling with my thought life i had so many random thoughts going through my head um and i was feeling quite anxious about that so i brought it to her and i was vulnerable with her and she actually turned to me taking in mind this day I mean, whatever I was wearing, it's not an excuse really anyway. But this day I was like, just in my casual clothes, but obviously people see me performing on stage and they have a certain perception of me from that. She turned to me and she was like, well, the fact that you struggle with like really random thoughts, like, do you think that maybe the way you dress has got something to do with that? And she did that kind of nasty, nice thing where someone says something quite cutting, but they do it with a like, do you think? And I literally, my jaw fell to the floor. I was literally like, like, are you actually saying this to me? Like, how have I been so vulnerable with this person? And that's all that they can give me at this point. And you know, when you just feel just really disappointed and I just felt like I didn't want to open up to her anymore. I actually walked out of that Bible study because I was just like, you know what? I came at you with I came to you with something that was really precious and sacred to me and you came back as in with this kind of attitude of like oh it must be your fault because you dress a certain way um so that experience led me on a journey of discovery with modesty because I really wanted to dig deep and not just be arrogant and kind of think that I had all the answers but really to look at what God says about it and to really search my own heart and to hopefully bring some revelation and freedom to myself and other people. It's worth pointing out as well that it's actually okay to come to people and maybe address them about something, you know, positive criticism. I don't think that's always a bad thing, but there's a way of doing things. And I just know that this woman in particular, um, that wasn't the biblical way to go about it. Like you're actually supposed to go to your brother and sister directly first and then if the, if the situation isn't resolved then you bring a third party in um but she didn't do that she did you know we were at a bible study and she just kind of brought it out and there were three of us to be fair but it was really inappropriate and it wasn't to do with the subject that we were talking about not to mention the fact that she could have just prayed for me in that scenario or been a bit more sensitive in how she'd approached it so i'm not saying you never say anything to anyone but we have to be careful how we do things and why we do things. So sometimes things are twisted to attack other people or to spin a certain narrative on what modesty means to benefit the person that's coming with that argument. So I just wanna try and give a more nuanced um, perspective on it, basically. The scripture that comes up the most when people are talking about modesty is the one that kind of people tend to go to more often than not. And it's the scripture in 1 Timothy 2.9. So I just want to read that out and bring it and we can discuss it from there. And it says, I want women to be modest in their appearance. 
they should wear decent and appropriate clothing and not draw attention to themselves by the way they fix their hair or by wearing gold or expensive clothes. So let's just stop right there. If we were taking scripture at face value and we just took that one passage there, then we would all be out of the righteousness of God. We're already out of the game in that one sentence. It's not just talking about wearing appropriate clothing, but it's talking about the way they fix their hair and not wearing expensive clothes, which is interesting because someone like me, okay, look at me, for example, I'm wearing a shirt that's a hand-me-down. I'm wearing trousers from Zara. Um, and, you know, I, I'm, I'm on a budget in the things that I wear. So does that mean that I'm more righteous than someone who's wearing expensive clothes? Like, let's get some perspective here. That would be ridiculous of me to suggest that, right? That I'm more righteous than you because I went and bought my clothes at a cheaper place. No, we don't go at it from the angle. There's a lot more that this scripture is saying than just that. Yeah, if we were taking this at face value, um, which we shouldn't ever with scripture because we have to look at God's word as a whole. And this is why we need the Holy Spirit when we're reading God's word, because it actually, there's another scripture in God's word that says all scripture is useful and beneficial for godly teaching. Um, so if we were just thinking, okay, that automatically means by that one scripture that if you have any elaborate hairstyle or if you wear any expensive clothes, you're out of the game, you're not modest, you might as well give up now then we need to look at the word of God as a whole and look at a book like Esther. There was a whole book on Esther. She was a queen. Um, she went on a journey of having to go through a series of beauty treatments before she was presented to the king. And whether people like that or not, that is in the Bible. It's right there in the word of God. It's not me saying that it's, it's God's word. And she's described as someone that is really beautiful in feature and her, you know, her appearance, but also her heart as well. And it wasn't either or. So we can't say that beauty is not, not celebrated by God because it is. And we, we only have to look at nature to realize that as well. So rather than taking nugget bits of scripture and taking them out of context we must look at the word of God as a whole and what each scripture is saying in certain scenarios so that we can get a more well-rounded view of what he's trying to say to us I mean there are some things God is really really clear about like do this don't do this and there's, there's a certain things that you can't argue about okay but we often look at certain scriptures like the one I've just said and we just think Okay, the word modesty, for example, we just take a word like modesty and we go, that means covering up. Why? Because we live in a world where, let's face it, we live in quite a vulgar, quite overly expressive world sometimes where people are like dry humping the floor in music videos. And we live in a world that is very sexualized. So if we think of a word like modesty, we automatically think of skin and we think it comes down to skin and covering up. But there's so much more to it than that. Modesty is a disposition of the heart. We kind of get this idea, especially in the Christian church, that the body is sinful, um, if we take scriptures out of context, that is. And so we often think if a woman is showing just the slightest bit of skin, then she should just burn in hell because she is causing her Christian brother to stumble and how very dare she. But modesty is so much more than skin. And that kind of viewpoint is really demeaning to women but also to men because it kind of suggests that men are just helpless creatures that can't control their own desires and think only with their penis and if a woman so much as shows her a hint of her shoulder to a guy then he's going to lose control and he cannot control himself and he it would just all all hell will break loose and there's this kind of idea that there's the woman's the temptress and the man is this poor little helpless creature, which we just know isn't true in both circumstances. Like women have a lot more to offer than their bodies and men are also not helpless little boys. Some of them are, but that's the same with women. We can't categorize these things. It's not either or. We can't have it both ways like that because we have to understand that some men have done the spiritual work and they don't deserve to be treated like they're just these out of control animals. So let's go back to the scripture. So yeah, if we're taking it at face value, then we shouldn't do anything that makes us look attractive to the opposite sex, which as I've said, we know isn't true. If we're looking at God's word as a whole, that we should be ashamed of our appearance and just hide ourselves because obviously in the book of Esther, beauty was really celebrated. And 
she was lifted up as an example of beauty and intelligence. It wasn't one or the other. So if we carry on in those scriptures, in 10, it says, for women who claim to be devoted to God should make themselves attractive by the good things they do. A lot of people have taken that scripture and they've literally said, okay, so if you try and make yourself look attractive as a woman, then you are basically the devil. And it's just such nonsense. What that scripture is actually saying is, you know, we can't decorate ourselves on the outside. We're free from the law. God's very clear about that. But that shouldn't be the subtotal focus of what brings us value. That's the main point of that scripture. So we have to stop taking it out of context and twisting it to suit a narrative that, that we feel more comfortable with because we're trying to figure out our own salvation. Even as we look back on the scripture and it says, women should not draw attention to themselves by the way they fix their hair or by wearing gold or pearls or expensive clothes. Now, how many people do you know that probably dress covered up head to foot, but they have really elaborate hairstyles? You probably know some, right? Do you think they're immodest? No, you probably don't because the world has sold you this narrative that modesty is all to do with skin, all to do with sexuality and all to do with nakedness. But let's look at the nuances and let's kind of uncover these things so we can have a more balanced and healthy perspective on this matter. So we have to look at the whole picture. You know, modesty is a disposition of the heart. It's how I carry myself. It's how we talk. It's how we walk. It's all those things. And yes, clothing is definitely an expression of who we are. But there's a lot more to it than just merely the things on the outside. It's, it's definitely a leaning of the heart and it's definitely an intention of the heart. Another thing that made me really focus in and start to learn about modesty was a situation that happened to the actress Megan Good. Some of you may know who she is. She's a really stunning, beautiful actress. Um, and she has a lovely husband called Devon Franklin who is a motivational speaker. He also writes books. He's a film producer. He, he's very um, entrepreneurial and they're a great couple. So Devon and Megan did a church talk. It was must have been about four years ago now. It was all over the internet. I'll put the links in my bio. And they did a talk with Tere Roberts that was talking about the fact that they operated in celibacy before they got married. It was a really good talk. It was really beautiful. It was really celebrating God's word and why they decided to do this to honor God. And then they had a question and answer session. In the question and answer session, a lady decided to make a statement towards Megan, which is quite interesting in itself because it was a question and answer session. It wasn't a statement session. So, sorry girl, you got that one wrong. And here's what she said to Megan Good. I was at a grocery store and I was at a newsstand and I saw you and you had your breast showing. And then she went on to say various other things and she finished her statement by saying, so we're gonna cover up, right? What? Girl, you need to take a seat. You need to take several seats and then some, like really. I was just like, oh, honestly, when I hear things like this, I'm just like, do people absolutely have no decorum? So in response to that, Devon Franklin said to the women, no, 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 we're not here for that. She's gonna wear what she wants to wear in the name of Jesus. And everyone clapped and he was supporting his wife and it was really beautiful. In fact, when I saw that, I felt really, really empowered as a woman because that's what a man is supposed to do. He's meant to cover his wife and lay down his life for his wife. So that was absolutely the right thing to do. But this is where they got a, quite a lot of clap back from, uh, from Christians online just saying, well, she doesn't get to wear what she wants to wear in the name of Jesus because she's a woman of God and she's married to a pastor. How dare she do that? Which is just so ignorant in itself because this is where I get really annoyed because people on the internet think they have a right to talk into random people's lives that they literally have no idea about. They've literally seen one thing of them and they've made a snap judgment. And let's just be honest as well, in this talk, I'll put the link in my bio, Megan, you know, the picture this lady saw, she wasn't topless, by the way. She was probably just in like a cleavagey top or something. So it was very over-dramatized anyway. But 
in this particular scenario, in the question and answer session, you know, Megan Good was aware I'm in a church, I'm in a surrounding where, you know, she probably wasn't going to dress like she would at a movie premiere in that scenario. And she was wearing a lovely checkered shirt and leggings. So it's like you're taking something you saw when she was posing on a magazine cover and then you're using it against her. I'm just so tired of people, especially women to other women, attacking them because of a clothing choice and taking their position out of the order. Like we have to remember there's an order to this. It's God first. Devon Franklin was there. Devon is her husband. He's her covering, not you, some random audience member who just wants to have a dig at a woman. It's not okay and it needs to stop. It really, really needs to stop. So as I was saying, they got a lot of clap back from other Christians. They got a lot of people saying, well, she's a pastor's wife, so there's a higher standard for her because she's a pastor's wife, which in itself is such an ignorant comment because anybody that follows Megan Good and Devon Franklin knows that Devon Franklin is actually, he actually classes himself as a film producer. That's how he met Megan Good and they happen to be Christians. He's a public speaker. Yes, he does sermons in church, but he also is a, is a motivational speaker. He's also a film producer, he's also an author. Like, you know, you can't just take one thing and then just make this whole narrative just because you wanna have a little dig at someone. And honestly, I think people do this because they actually don't wanna do the work themselves. They'd rather make an attack at a random person who's in the public eye than actually do the inner work and work out their own salvation with fear and trembling, which is actually what we're called to do as believers. And by this woman going and shaming someone publicly in a room full of people and having absolutely no decorum, to be honest, I'm pretty sure that she's the one that's being immodest in that scenario because what we're called to do as believers is to pray for our brothers and sisters in spirit and truth, but we're also called, if we have a problem, to go directly. We don't go on a public forum and embarrass ourselves. I'm, I'm not even going to say embarrass Megan Good because she didn't embarrass Megan Good, she embarrassed herself. Not to mention the fact that if you watch the video, which you can do, it's all over the internet, if you just type in woman comes at Megan Good incorrectly, that this woman, when she addressed her, she sounded like she was drunk or high or something. She sounded like delirious. I'm sorry, but isn't that immodest? You're making a show of yourself on YouTube, in a public space, in front of loads of people, and you're talking to this woman about modesty? Pot, kettle, come on! It's more than a clothing choice, it's a disposition of the heart, it's the way you carry yourself, and in my opinion, that woman was not carrying herself, and that was not from the Holy Ghost. We have to discern every spirit, and to see if the spirit is from Christ. And I don't know about you, but for me, that woman getting up and slurring in a church in front of loads of people, that's not how my father in heaven talks to me. So that wasn't the spirit of God. I'm sorry, girl, you need to take a seat. Also, not to mention the fact the Bible says so much about judging. So if, if any of us can really get to those pearly gates with the amount of judging that goes on and trolling online, general gossip about what other people are wearing and how they look, if we can stand before those pearly gates at the end of our life and honestly say that we have a pure conscience before God, then by all means go ahead and do it. But just remember that with the same way you're judging other people, you're going to be judged that way as well. So rather, I would say, let's go to our Father in heaven rather than attacking people in public forums. It's just disgusting, really. And I think we'll have a lot to answer for. Not to mention the fact Megan Good is a really beautiful woman. She can't help that she's beautiful. She was born that way. She was an actress when Devon Franklin met her. I'm sure he knew that. So we have to stop making these snap judgments at people. We seem to forget the scriptures and all the other things in the Bible that talk about lots of nuanced things that God's trying to say to us. In 1 Corinthians 9.19, which says we need to be a Jew to the Jew and a Greek to the Greek so that we might win some to Christ. Now, what I'm not saying before I talk about the scriptures is that we shouldn't have any morals and we should just do whatever we want and put a God label on it. This scripture is talking about how we present ourselves, how we strategically put ourselves in scenarios 
and address people and are on their level with them so that we can relate to people. We also forget that some of the scriptures in Corinthians that some people kind of go, well, actually women were told to be quiet, so this, this and this, are they were addressed to a certain church. The Corinthian church was very immoral. They were worshipping other gods. They were worshipping idols and everything was disorderly. So they were trying to get some order back into a system that had already got out of order. It's like the pandemic that we're in now. We have to take precautions and we have to keep our distance from each other because of the time that we are in. So we must remember that every scripture is for a specific time and a specific group of people before we just take one thing and start bashing random people over the head with it. This scripture in 1 Corinthians 9.19 is so wonderful and it says, even though I'm a free man with no master, I have become a slave to all people to bring many to Christ. When I was with the Jews, I lived like a Jew to bring the Jews to Christ. When I was with those who follow the Jewish law, I too lived under that law. When I'm with the Gentiles who do not follow the Jewish law, I too live apart from that law so I can bring them to Christ. But I do not ignore the law of God. I obey the law of Christ. And what is the law of Christ? To love your father in heaven and to love others as you love yourself and bring glory to him. It's not saying we don't have any morals because it's saying I don't ignore the law of God, but I do relate to those people. And then it goes on in, 22 so first corinthians 9 22 to say when i'm with those who are weak i share their weaknesses for i want to bring the weak to christ yes i try to find common ground with everyone doing everything i can to save some now what is common ground common ground for someone like megan good for example she's an actress she's in an industry where people often haven't set foot into a church or wouldn't dream of doing it. It's a very um, creative, very expressive industry. And by being who she is, she will be relating to those people because she's not just suddenly changing her whole persona, but she is living by godly values. So they see something in her, oh, you speak like me, you talk like me, you're like me, you wear little skirts like me, you wear little cute outfits, but there's something different about you. And they can taste and see that the Lord is good because they're probably quite intrigued by the fact that someone that looks like her is practicing something like celibacy or has practiced celibacy because they're like, well, what is that? How can someone that looks like me and talks like me and is in the same industry as me that's really hard because it's surrounded by temptation live a life of celibacy and then they will have a taster of God and the glory will go to her father in heaven and not to her. So by doing that, I believe that is modesty because it's getting on a level with people and not completely changing your whole persona because you think you're holier than everyone else. It's I'm relating to you on this level. I'm like you, but I've, I've had a heart transformation. This is what I want to do to glorify God. So I think that's modest. I think that is beautiful. I think that is finding common ground and being a Jew to the Jew and a Greek to the Greeks, like the scripture tells us. And I don't know about you, but I don't know many people that have wanted to become Christians because the religion and because the fuddy-duddy, looking down, pointing finger attitude has really just made them want to come to Christ and know Jesus. That's so enticing to them that they just can't resist and they want to know this wonderful God. How many people do you know that have wanted to come to God because of legalism. So yeah, I believe someone like that, Megan Good, an actress, is getting on a level with people because the package isn't what some people expect. They will automatically say, you're being immodest, whereas actually she is being salt and light in her chosen sphere of influence. And she's actually on a level with those people. I'm not saying we just do whatever we want and we just throw a God label on it, but we have to be true to who we've been called to the Bible's very clear about that. Another thing that I've seen which really makes me laugh is people that would judge other, like young people for like wearing, you know, a, an off the shoulder top or something. And then they will be in church themselves, but they're slain by the Holy Ghost and all the junk will be out of the trunk. And, but that's okay because you're not the Hollywood, they, or, or they will think that's okay because you're not the Hollywood stereotypical type thing of what, is considered sexy or tempting to a man. Whereas actually, if we're thinking biblically anyway, then sexiness is far more to do with who we are in our heart than an outward appearance. So we can't have one rule for one and another for someone else. So we have to 
look at this as a whole picture. Like we have to be fair and we have to be broad with this. We have to have more of a fear of God than a fear of man. Because there's a scripture also in Romans 14, 23 that says everything that does not come from faith is sin. And it's talking about eating and drinking. And if someone thinks it's a sin to eat something, they shouldn't eat it. But if something, they they don't have that conviction, they have to in faith eat what they want. So if we're changing our whole persona just to please men, and that's not coming from faith in God, but coming from our own sort of efforts of righteousness, then that is sin. You know, this is a connection. We're connected to our Father in heaven, and then we give out from the overflow. It doesn't go like this and then this. There's a reason why we go to him first, and then everything we do flows from that place. And that is why when we think things like this, maybe we should go to our Father first instead of making a judgment or saying something without really prayerfully thinking about it, because do we really care or are we just projecting? Genuine question. To conclude, we will go to Proverbs 3130, which is a perfect scripture to end this discussion on. And it says, charm is deceptive and beauty does not last, but a woman who fears the Lord will be greatly praised. That says it all, doesn't it? It's not about the clothing choices we make, it's about the person of the heart. We have to have more than our looks. Let's not get wrong. We are more than our clothing choices. We are more than our bodies. We are more than the outward appearance. So let people have fun with it. Let them decorate it. Let them adorn what God has given them. Obviously, we go to God with every choice and we say, like, Father, am I honouring you with this? Or we, we decide if we are feeling who we are in God in our chosen outfit. But let's focus on our own salvation and let's remember that we are more than our clothing choices. Other people are more than their clothing choices and we are more than our bodies. And modesty is a disposition of the heart. This has been a hard subject to address. I'm really glad that I did and I hope it brings freedom and revelation and joy to people like it has to me. Like I always say, subscribe to the channel. The links are all below. And let me know what subjects you wanna hear me talk on. I really enjoyed doing these vlog podcasts. I look forward to seeing you soon for another episode of Just Jill. Keep up to date with everything that's going on on this channel and I will see you soon. Bye bye.